Okay, in this procedure, and this is a video, what we're going to do is look at this data set. So we have a response variable here, and I'm going to call this, uh, just call that Y, I'll just change it to Y. And I got two categorical variables with it, brand, and so brand is A, B, C, and D, okay. So there's four levels of brand, A, B, C, and D, so there's four brands essentially. And we also have technology, which is uh, four levels to that also, W, X, Y, and Z. Four by four, essentially, okay? Now, I'm going to just sort of concentrate on brand. And essentially what we're going to do here is just see, is the mean uh, of Y, diff or is Y different between each brand? Is the average different between each brand, each of the four brands? So this is a one-way ANOVA example. So let's go start that off. Now, essentially what I'm going to do for this particular video is just ignore tech and just pretend it's not there. So one way ANOVA, okay. So what we're going to do here is go to stat and we're going to go to ANOVA and we're going to go to one way, okay, one way ANOVA. And the response here is Y, okay, so that's Y, select that. And the factor there is like the categorical variable here is brand now again just ignoring tech for this one select okay now comparisons so there's a couple of things we can do so we're going to put in some of these comparisons here and I'll sort of explain them what they are shortly okay and uh, just click a few things there okay graphs well we have the residual plot a box plot of data whoops where are we gone the box plot of data let's actually include that Okay, interval plots. Now the residual plots are interesting, but I'm going to sort of leave them out this time just to save space. Okay, they're not that they're not that much different from other cases. Uh, results, uh, simple tables. Okay, yeah. So, so let's click on that and see what we get. Okay. Now, uh, there we go. Loads of these little plots come up. So essentially, let's just start at the start. Okay. Here we go, all the way up. So Y versus brand, all means are equal. So the mean of A, mean of B, mean of C, mean of D, they're all equal. And the alternative hypothesis is that one is different, okay? So we have four brands, and we have samples from four brands, and essentially what we want to do is infer about the general population. Equal variance is assumed for the analysis, okay? The factor is brand, and there's four levels, A, B, C, and D. Okay, now first off, what we're going to look at here is this an analysis of variance table, okay? Now, essentially what we're sort of saying here is that this is the p-value we, p we use to sort of interpret that null hypothesis or alternative hypothesis earlier on. There we go, zero, zero, zero. So that means we reject the null hypothesis. Let's go back up and remember what that was. We reject the null hypothesis that all means are equal, okay? So one of them's a bit different from the rest, okay? And, okay, so the R-squared, interesting, but I'm not going to look at it so much here. Here's some summary statistics for each of the four groups, A, B, C, and D. So it's seemingly just 24 uh, in each sample. A, B, C are quite, uh, you know, in the low 50s, but we notice that D is in the high 50s, okay? Also, look at the confidence interval for the means there, you know. So essentially what we're saying is D has a much higher content by comparison, a uh, much higher response or the, val the mean values are much higher in general when compared to A, B, and C, and D. So D is the one that sort of sticks out here. D is different from the rest, okay? Now, two key pairwise comparison, okay? And this one's interesting here. I really like this one. This is a really nice little output here. Essentially, what you're sort of saying here is which ones are significantly different from each other, okay? Essentially, D is out on its own, okay? D is not like any of the others, okay? But A, B, and C are not significantly different. So if we were just looking at the three of them, essentially what we'd sort of say is that they're all similar enough to each other. So means that do not share a letter are significantly different, okay? Now it could be the case that you might get, uh, uh, an, for example, E, for let's say uh, hypothetically, another brand E that would be sort of not dissimilar from D, but not dissimilar from the other ones, but they are dissimilar from each other. So you could actually have sort of very seemingly um, inaccurate, uh, not inaccurate, inconsistent uh, sort of groupings there. But if you think about what exactly those groupings mean, it's not actually inconsistent at all. Very, very interesting in this table, essentially what I'm sort of saying. Okay. Now, um, 
then there's the confidence intervals for the differences, okay? And essentially, this just sort of backs up uh, what we are looking at. The, uh, this is just a sort of bit more mathematics, this stuff here. A bit more mathematics to sort of uh, uh, support that those sort of uh, groupings up here. So essentially, this is just a sort of mathematical basis for these groupings here. I think these are... Not, this is the best the, the, the best thing to look at straight away and this just actually p provides a bit more proof for example D versus A uh, significantly different okay D uh, and B significantly different D and C significantly different okay but uh, B and A not significantly different B and C not significantly different and so on okay um, okay there's the other ones there as well like the Fisher fair uh, pairwise comparison. I think it more or less gives the same sort of information. Okay. Anyway, so the pairwise, those pairwise things are really, really interesting. That's a box plot of all the various values. Really good. And you can sort of see that D is much higher. The but the level of D is much higher when compared to the rest. Something that you might notice though is actually that the uh, the 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 box plots seem to have been fairly consistent in terms of variance, which is the sort of say how are we picking up on that? They're more or less the same sort of dimension. Okay, the box plots. That's something to pick up on. Uh, let's fold that down. That's something very similar there. That's the interval plot. Uh, confidence interval for the means. It just actually sort of, you know, we see that D is up there, right up in its own. Okay. Uh, up in the top right. And, yeah, that's a couple of other things there. I'm sort of, that's just some, like, the uh, graphical interpretations of um, the... Uh, those confidence intervals for the case-wise the, the the differences between each of the groups there. So that's that the confidence that's the sort of graphical representation of this stuff here. Okay. So essentially, what you should do here is you might sort of pick up if you're looking at this. And uh, this is a graphical sort of representation. This is actually very useful for, for for deciding which are not significantly different from the others. So B and A are not significantly different because they're, that sort of crosses that line. Whoops. I hate when that happens. Uh, C and A, there, see that trend line down there? Whatever crosses that trend line, that reference line, uh, it means that the two... Uh, groupings in particular are not significantly different from each other, whereas over here D and A they are significantly different from each other because they do they don't cross that trend line. Very interesting stuff. Those uh, when one way ANOVA, the very interesting uh, uh, the particularly the pairwise comparisons to actually decide what is different from what. Very interesting stuff there. Okay.